All right, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to see here this morning is more or less a show-and-tell video of the Trevithic engine, which I've been building for, I don't know, the last month or so. And all of the major mechanical components are finished now, with the exception of the linkage which operates the steam valve up here. There's a big air cylinder, or steam cylinder, inside the boiler, and this valve swings back and forth to advance and retract the cylinder and make the engine run. Now, I wasn't after a true authentic restoration here, but I've tried to capture all of the very neat major mechanical components. So with that said, I will put it through its paces and show you from each side. So when it runs, this is the action of it. I'm turning it by the flywheel. The flywheel is in turn running a shaft going to a conrod on the opposite side of the engine, which is changed, driving through the gear train. And the gears that you see freewheeling here will actually be attached to the wheels to turn the wheels when this thing operates. So that's it operating from the one side, and you'll notice it has a offset in the conrod on this side. And fortunately, I didn't need to put an offset in the conrod on this side, because that's just the way it worked out. The Trevithic engine had an offset in both conrods because it was much larger and slightly different. The Trevithic engine was built in 1805, and it was the first steam-driven vehicle in recorded history to run on rails and to tow a load and passengers behind it. It was not successful because in 1805, their metallurgy was not good enough to make rails that would hold the weight of the Trevithic engine. And the rails kept breaking, so as a consequence, the engine was, the train was not a success. But the engine shows some extremely good engineering from 1805 by Richard Trevithick. Thank you for looking.